Green? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank okay. You, sir. Um, uh, again, um, I welcome um, everyone um, to this um, very short presentation. Um, let me please uh, seek your understanding. I'm using my private modem um, because the network where I am um, appears to be a little bit um, slow. So I have had to resort to my private modem. So um, please, if you can't hear me at any point, let me know. I can always quickly repeat myself. And I will, as much as possible, make this very brief. I am holding this brief for my uh, colleague, the coordinating director in charge of uh, DISG. Um, and my presentation, I hope you can still see my screen. Yes, I hope so. Um, we'll be, okay, uh, very briefly, uh, this is what we are going to be looking at, the summary of all issues that has been raised to date. Um, what responses um, we have uh, uh, are done, and then what will be the way forward, and we will take responses also or feedback from participants, and then we will close. Um, what are the issues that had been raised either to, uh, by taxpayers? Essentially, um, there are three major complaints. One is uh, inability of taxpayers uh, to claim, uh, to obtain credit for with head output tax. Two, um, challenges with input taxes that had been paid on imports and also claiming of input taxes on domestic purchases. Um, these were the three main uh, uh, challenges or issues raised by taxpayers on the new VAT model. Um, then what have we done as a service uh, to resolve this? Um, I think one of the major complaints that we saw um, was um, some of us were querying why um, suppliers need to provide the TIN of their customers. Um, and more so that in some industries, by doing so will be very cumbersome. For example, um, a, a supermarket who has uh, going to have thousands of customers in a day. Um, I think first of all, on the point of law, um, every taxpayer is required to provide a VAT invoice based on the provision of Section 13A. So um, as to the source of that information, I don't think we have any problem. How be it, um, the resolution that we have on the system going forward um, is that uh, mm -hmm. where a supplier does not have the TIN of the customer, it can just put O or a zero, just put zero, uh, figure zero, and then you are able to go ahead uh, and do your filing. And if you need to come and re-enter that TIN, perhaps it's possible at the point of transaction, you do not have the information and now you need to have it. Uh, the system also allows you to come back and update that field. And if there is nothing, um, then there is none. You are not in any way stopped from moving forward. Um, what we counsel is that where you have corporate customers, who may want to claim input tax, uh, please do well to ensure that you provide this information, either while you are doing your filing or later on uh, after you have done the filing. Um, we are updating the, um, the, the, the system to make the feed non-mandatory. So when we are finished with the next update, which we are working on, uh, you will even be able to go without putting anything on that field. Uh, as it were today, you have to put something. And that's, that is why the system is being configured for you to enter the figure zero, and then you can move on. Uh, but when we are done with the update, uh, you will not even need to enter anything if you don't have to.
All right. Uh, now let's go to the main issues. And that has to do with uh, claim and granting of input tax on domestic purchases. Um, we have noted the comments as to uh, the position of the law and the current policy. And we also have noted uh, the need for the service to ensure that only genuine input tax claims are granted. Uh, doing otherwise will be promoting inequality in the marketplace. Um, and also, it will also not help our own government and people who need the tax revenue for various things. And so, what then are we proposing going forward? One is that while filing returns, taxpayers will be required to populate a schedule of purchases. And here we are talking about domestic purchases, which we include all purchases you have made during the period or, and the, the related input taxes that you have paid. And this had to be done item by item. Um, and the claims must be limited to only qualifying items. Um, uh, we are already very familiar with that section 17 of the VAT Act uh, is clear on that. Then number two thing that goes is that this schedule must include the name of the supplier. I mean, the, I mean, you are, I mean, the taxpayer who is filing return is deemed to be the purchaser. Um, so you must have the name of the person from whom the goods had been purchased in Nigeria, the TIN, the address, the description of goods as short as possible, the invoice value, and the amount of VAT paid. I mean, there's going to be a template. So if you don't need to worry about this, we'll give you a template which you can use to provide the necessary information uh, either in a CSV uh, file or you can enter manually uh, whichever one works for you. Then it is also very important that as a taxpayer, when you are making your procurement, and you know that you will require to claim your input tax, you must make sure you get the VAT invoice. And this is a matter of the law anyway, Section 13A, uh, I think, um, makes uh, issuance of VAT invoice mandatory. So you must ensure you get so that you can get all the information that you need to put on the schedule. And then the system will allow your input tax that you have entered, that you have uploaded, uh, whichever way you have done it. And you can go ahead and pay your VAT that you have computed by yourself. Now, the service will internally verify all input tax claim. Um, we will explain that further down the line within a period. Now, if after that period, an input tax claim cannot be verified, and using the word verify here means that we cannot locate the supposed supplier. And, and let me just, for illustration purposes, say, um, uh, Mr. Uh, company A had bought something from company B, and company A had entered the details of company B, address, name, TIN, and whatever it be it. And then the system is not able to verify. FRS, we are not able to locate this company B after a period. We will have done all our due diligence. If we cannot get this company B, that is what we mean by we are not able to verify that input tax. But once we can locate that company B, we will deem that we have verified that input as whether or not company B had paid. It's not going to be an issue for company A. But where we cannot trace that company B, 
then we will come back to the person who made the input tax claim and say to you, look, we can't find this, your supplier. And then within a specified period of time, you must be able to fish that person out. We will work with that person. But if that still could not be done, then that input tax claim will be disallowed and it will become a liability to the taxpayer with penalty and interest. And we are possible we may we are possible we may prosecute for providing false claim. Now, as regard import tax on imports, um, currently the FRS obtains and we upload to the tax pro mask import data from Nigerian Customs Service. We do this periodically. And we use the data to verify claims that are made by taxpayers. And I mean, you, the line is line 130 um, on the system, so you can, and you can see how it works. Uh, now, taxpayer, as at now, can either manually enter the amount of VAT paid on imports, and again, it must be limited to allowed items. You, we all know that input tax on fixed assets, for example, is not claimable, so, um, or expenses that are expensed through the PI head and, and things like that. And then, um, for now, the service is working with Nigeria Customs Service to enable us to do online real-time integration of the task promise with the custom service. This is going on. But why this is going on, what are we doing now? What are we going forward for now? And so going forward now, this, the, the process is going to follow the same process as input tax on domestic purchases, in which case taxpayers will populate the schedule of imports, uh, which will show all importations and of course the relevant input tax that was paid at the port. And there must be detail of the import, talking about the exporter, the country of location, um, your bill of lading, uh, 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 details, and all of such things. Again, FRS is going to provide you with templates of the schedule, so you don't need to really worry yourself. It will provide you all the elements that you must be shown on the schedule, and then I'm, I'm sure once you pass your goods through the normal channel of customs, you can't have any problem providing the information. And then input tasks that are so claimed, uploaded via this uh, 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 um, field will be granted pending verification. And then the service will internally work with Nigeria Customs Service to verify all input tax claims. And if we cannot verify anyone with the Customs Service, then we'll come back to the taxpayer and say, look, this is your claim. We can't verify it with customs. And within a period of time, if it still cannot be verified, then we will disallow that claim. Again, raise penalty and interest and probably uh, prosecute for false claim. Um, the third issue, um, a major issue, is the issue of output tax withheld by recipients of um, vertical Google's or supplies or services. And the treatment we are proposing goes also along the same line as that of input tax. In which case, a taxpayer whose output tax had been withheld will provide a schedule of withheld VAT schedule. Right, which is very similar to the schedule of purchases. And it will include the name of the person that withheld, maybe an MDA or a, 
an entity in oil and gas or someone that the FRS had authorized to withhold the TIN and all the necessary details. Again, we are going to provide you with a template that we assist you uh, in doing this. So you don't need to worry too much. And then uh, once you upload this to the tax pro max, we will allow the deductions immediately. Why we go ahead and verify. And verify means either the person who has withheld had paid, provided your TIN also at the point of um, payment, and then system can cross match, or we use the data you have provided us to go and locate the person. And then once we locate the person, we deem that that uh, VAT withheld had been verified whether or not the person had paid, and then we'll take that up within ourselves. How be it, if we cannot locate the person whom the taxpayer claimed to have withheld the output tax, uh, we'll refer again to the taxpayer, and if within a period um, we could still not uh, locate the person, uh, we will withdraw that credit and raise uh, additional liability with interest and penalty and also with the possibility of prosecution for making false claim. Now, um, there were some other minor issues that were raised. Um, we can report that uh, all of them have been resolved. Um, there were issues around input taxes before April. Um, we can confirm that you can claim um, those input taxes uh, once they have been uploaded uh, to the system. And if the input tax is not fully utilized in one month, it is available, it's automatically carried forward um, to a future uh, period for the taxpayer. Uh, there was um, issues of where input tax exceeds output tax. Um, we know that this can happen in very limited circumstances, and they are very limited, uh, because we all remember that Section 17 of VAT Act had tied input tax that can be granted to output tax that had been generated by that input tax. So, but then we still uh, know that there are some very, very tiny windows where input tax could be higher than the output tax. And in such an instance, the output tax will remain as credit uh, on the account of the taxpayer and which could be used for future output taxes or uh, a refund uh, process could be triggered. And then there was this also minor issue, a uh, complaint that the system was not taking more than a thousand transactions per schedule. Um, we can confirm to you that uh, the system can handle more than 1,000 records per schedule. Of course, it may also be, I mean, um, for, 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 for users, it may also be uh, a good idea to, um, to allow our uploads to be in, in, in bits um, so that um, you, we don't have issues around the system, uh, maybe because of um, uh, speed of um, communication uh, between system and system, um, the system could get hung, uh, hung up in the middle. So you may also want to um, break them into little, little lot, like maybe 300 or 500, but the system we have can handle more than 1,000 uh, per one, uh, per, per schedule. Now, I just want to now quickly do an illustration of all of this uh, when the new system becomes fully operational. But to start with, uh, for the month of May filing, the system had been um, hoping that we can do our filing as we used to do it before. So you don't need to worry at all. The way you used to claim your input tax, your withheld VAT, uh, enter your output tax, you can do so. And those of us who already have our schedules, um, you can also uh, uh, do so. So it accommodates is flexible, the system is flexible for this month filing. Now, let me now illustrate what is going to happen going forward. 
going forward, and which will begin with transactions in May 2023, and which returns will be due in June 2023. We expect that anyone claiming input tax for purchases will have the purchases schedule, like we have said before. Similarly, anyone claiming for uh, credits for VAT that have been withheld, you must provide the schedule of withheld VAT. Anyone claiming input tax on imports must equally provide by uploading the import schedule. This is very, very important going forward. But this month of filing of, of May for April transaction, it is not mandatory. But beginning from transactions of May, which will be due in June, it is very mandatory. But before then, we will provide you with a template. It will be on Tax Pro Max, and then it will become easy for you to use. Now, so this new system that is, we're going to start to operate, I want to illustrate very fully. And these are the steps uh, that it will follow. Step one, and we will assume month one, and that is the month of transaction. And so for the purposes of our discussion, that will be 1st of May to 31st of May, all our purchases and sales for that month. That will be the month of transaction, month one. So you do your transactions, you carry out your businesses, no problem. Then step two, which is month two, taking off from 1st to 21st of June is the window for you to file your returns, your VAT returns. And that is the month following the month of transaction. I mean, this is as per the law. And so as a taxpayer, you must file all your VAT returns for month one in month two, not later than 21st of June. Step three, which is still month two, that is after filing the returns, but before the end of the calendar month, which is going to be 30th of June, the system will attempt to begin to match all your input tax claims, whether on domestic purchases or, or imports with customs data or your withheld VAT with the remittances of the withholding agent. So within that window of about nine, 10 days, depending on when you file your returns, the system will begin to do matching and be granting permanently um, input taxes or uh, allowing credits permanently. Now, step four, which is month three, or the month that follows the month in which the returns was filed. And if we go by our illustration, that will take us to the month of July, July 1st to July 31st. Any input tax claim, whether on domestic or whether on import, or any claim for credit for output tax withheld, that the system is not able to match or trace or validate, we will, as FRS, use our own manual process all over the country to begin to trace, to locate the supposed supplier to whom we told him, I mean, we told him our input tax had been paid, to talk to customs, to trace and validate input tax that have been paid on imports and to trace any withholding agents, whether an MGA or, or uh, a company in the oil and gas or any of the authorized banks or communication companies. So 
We will use the whole of one month to do that. And that will become easy because we will now use the data you have provided us, the name of the person, the address, whatever contacts, everything you have given to us, we'll use to trace that person. So that's what we'll do in month three or as step four. Now, concurrently, as we are doing step four, we'll also be doing something in step, I, I, I will move to step five. All suppliers that we have traced, all people who have waited VAT that we have traced, we will we'll take issues with them on our own. So anyone that requires that we apply a penalty and interest, we will do so. Anyone that requires that we take to court, we will, will do so. So you, the taxpayer who has filed this result is not bothered. That's our own uh, work. However, if we are unable to trace the persons you have given to us as to the person you have paid your input tax to, or who have withheld your output tax, or we cannot trace with customs, input tax you claim to have paid on import, will come back to you. We'll come back to you to say, we couldn't trace what you gave to us. And we will give you a very limited time for you to assist us to trace that person. And if it's a payment to customs, to trace that payment in customs. So that is step five. So this is gonna be happening more or less with step four. And then step six, we are now in month four. And for the purposes of our illustration, we will have entered the month of August. And so this is the month we must close every issue in respect of returns that were filed in June. And so if there's anyone we have referred to you and you are not able to help us to trace, since you are the one who paid the money to the person, I mean, where you were paying, you know how to locate him. So and now we can't get him and you can't get him. We will have penalized you. We will have given you additional liability. And if we have any case in court, or if we need to take you to court, we will have taken you to court. And we will close every issue in August, it will not go beyond that. So these are, are, in summary, the new process that we are implementing and all other things being equal, we do expect to implement this by the time we get to June 1. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is, uh, where we are going, and then we'll be glad to have your feedback.